Hi. What is up, everybody? Hey, Welcome. friends. What's up? Um, happy Friday, everybody. Yeah, happy Friday. We came in really hot there. I just watched our levels, like both of us talking. We're just excited to see you today. Um, Nick, hi. How was your week? <laughs> hey, pretty good, man. Uh, a really good week, actually. Um, but then things kind of crashed and tumbled today so it was like <laughs> you know uh, how it goes so it's a friday yeah if you're just joining us uh here on the live stream and behance hello hi welcome nice to see you hi frank kevin uh wade is here patty's here nice to see you if you're watching this on youtube on a replay hi uh we're talking about photoshop today if you are looking yes. for photoshop basics you search for photoshop 101 guess right you guess what you've come to the right place <laughs> that's that sentence that i want but you also guessed right that this is the place to come for the basics basics and yes this is where we're going to talk about all the foundations of all these different applications and you're in for a treat because i am quite a beginner when it comes to photoshop um i have no problem saying that i am a superstar at illustrator but this uh self-taught and uh probably <laughs> doing it all wrong <laughs> yes exactly so uh, again if you are watching this uh on a replay or live there's no wrong way to do it nick um, you can follow along with us, or if you discover a different way, that's fine as well. We're actually going to be showing you two completely different programs to work in. So we'll start in Photoshop, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about something called Creative Cloud Express as well, because that's a lot of carryover from what's happening in Photoshop. So yeah. let's go ahead and hop in and talk about real quick if you are intimidated by the idea of jumping into Photoshop 101. This is, this is not what I want you to do, but if you're intimidated, turn this episode off right now. Turn it off right now, and what I want you to do is go over to this YouTube channel. It is youtube.com slash Adobe Creative Cloud Express, and Creative Cloud Express has a lot of great tutorials, and it's an awesome program. If you don't want to jump into Photoshop, if you're a little too intimidated, that's fine. Uh, head over to the Creative Cloud Express YouTube, and you can watch some awesome tutorials there that will help you get the uh, similar effects as Photoshop, but not quite as deep. But yeah. today we're talking about Photoshop, so let's go ahead and hop in and talk about Photoshop. Look at this little cutie. <laughs> All right, this is not where I wanted to start, but uh, that's where we start. Perfect All right, image. <laughs> Nick, let's talk about the lowest level, basic, basic, basic in Photoshop, and yeah. that is setting up an artboard. Uh, Always, so, right? Yes, if we're setting up a new document, what do we use Photoshop for, Nick? What do you usually use Photoshop for? I'm 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 thinking it's everything that's non-vector, pixelated, picture, illustration, manipulation, overlay. Does that sound right? Yes, all of those <laughs> things. I I also are you are you do you have like a notebook, Nick? Are you like reading notes? Am I do I have a notebook for what? I heard like pages rustling and it, it, oh. it, it all that I got was like the idea of a news anchor and you're like reading through your page. Yeah. Yes. Just, yes. Just some things that I wrote down. Hold on, hold yeah. on. Let me yeah. let me show behind the scenes. And this is why if you've never joined us at office hours, we do it live and we'll show you that. Nick, can you hold up your notes real quick? Yes. Look at this. Look at that. We're prepared. We do it live and we're here with you. We are one of you. We're not here to just like show you things. We're learning as well. We can't afford fancy <clears throat> cue card holders no, over no. in the other side of our studios. None of that. Slash offices. Right. <laughs> uh, so, yes, we're using it for editing things that are pixel based, um, which if you watched our Illustrator Basics video, everything was vector, which was mathematical. It was crisp, clean lines. Everything in Photoshop is technically just a tiny little square. So yes. we're going to open up a new document and we're going to do that. If you're in Photoshop, just go to File, New. And here, we're not gonna worry about a lot of these details yet. We're gonna come back for Photoshop 201 in the future and we'll show you a lot of details. Um, but what you wanna do is look for maybe a web. And here you wanna do web large. It's 1920 by 1080 pixels. Uh, that's what we'll be working with today if you want to join us as well. So we're gonna hit create and boom, we have it. Artboard one, that's where we're working, awesome. Um, and I'm going to make just a quick little shape, a little brush mm -hmm. so that you guys can see what I'm talking about when I talk about Photoshop being pixel based. So Illustrator doesn't do this very well. It's very gradated. It has uh, a yeah. lot of nuance to it and a lot of softness for Photoshop. And if we zoom in here, look at that. See all it's those little squares. Pixels. So yeah. each of those squares, Nick, what are those squares called? Pixels. Pixels. Uh, so each pixels. of these squares is a pixel, and Photoshop is working with 
pixels. Now, if I wanted to, I could even come in here and change a single one of these pixels, right? If I really needed to, uh, I could come in and let's literally change this to one and see if it works. I can click on one of these pixels and say we want it to be green. What just happened? Yeah. Andrew, there, oh, there we go. Uh, I think, no, it didn't work. Okay, well, in theory, I could change one of these pixels by making my brush super, super small. And you can see, boom, it has changed a single pixel. So again, whenever working with Photoshop, think about it in tiny little squares that you're augmenting and changing. So I'm gonna there zoom out, let's I'm just yeah. hitting Z. There's, look at, look at our little guy. This is so great. Yeah. This is the earth floating in the cosmos. <laughs> All right, so uh, with Photoshop, we have created this brush. We've created a new document. We understand artboards a little bit more. Great, love that. So we're going to start here and I'm gonna show you just some basics. Now, Nick, what, what would you use Photoshop for again? I, I say a lot of product photography that needs a little bit of touch up Maybe there's a, a a quick change that needs to be on the label. So it's like it's really enhancing editing, and I I'm, I don't think I create much from the very beginning or scratch. Yep. On on Photoshop. Yeah. So we're actually going to cover both sides of Photoshop because it's great for photo editing, but it's also great for like making images, making social media exactly. images, making marketing materials. And so what I'm going to do is just show you some basics of Photoshop so that we can get started. And the first thing that I want to show you is the paint bucket tool. And you're going to have to bear with me because I might have to find some of these tools because I use hotkeys so much. So the paint bucket tool is right over here. And if we click on this, all that it's going to do is think about you're dropping in a paint bucket. You're spilling yeah. a paint bucket on the canvas and it will fill an entire space with that color. So down here you can see your fill color is on the front, stroke color is on the back, and we have filled with that gorgeous green. Uh, so all I did was click on the paint bucket tool and placed it, it filled everything. So something else you can do in Photoshop is you can use selections. and. Illustrator doesn't really have this capability at all, so there's not a way to kind of uh, understand the difference, but a selection that I like to think of it is almost like creating a cutout, right? It's creating yeah. a window and almost in photo or in Illustrator like a clipping mask, but it's creating a window for us to work inside or outside. So I'm going to select right here the elliptical marquee tool. And the way to get to tools, if yours is the rectangle, you can click and hold and then go to the elliptical marquee tool. And what that's gonna do is as I click and drag, it's going to stretch out an elliptical marquee. Uh, and the marquee, we like to talk about it as marching ants. So you can see the marching ants that yep. are happening right there. Pay attention to no, no attention to what I'm doing right now. I just made a mistake. All right, so see the marching ants that are right there, right? Uh, so these marching ants are going to show us and tell us that there is a selection happening. Everything inside the marching ants is what is selected and is like the area that we will be working on. So on the outside, you can see the crosshairs. On the inside, you see a little white arrow. The white arrow means that that's your selection. So Nick, as we're working, we do something in Illustrator that just happens that we need to do manually in Photoshop and that is layers. Do you work with layers in Illustrator? Oh, I, I think Photoshop got me to be more, more layer oriented with everything we do now. So like particularly in, there's no other way to work, I think in Photoshop, right? Because yep. for editing sake, you, you, you have, you can't, you can't select something unless it is actually on its own layer. Yep. So in Illustrator, you can select yep. uh, here. You can't. So let's do this. I'm going to change this to a nice pink because I think it's going to actually look really good if we do like a soft little pink with the screen. All right, nice. so I'm going to use that paint bucket tool again and watch what happens. So when I use that paint bucket tool and click, it is going to fill, oh, I do love those colors. Uh, mm, it is going to nice. fill that selection, right? So we basically made a window and we said, hey, everything inside these marching ants, I want you to fill with this color. If I click outside, it's not gonna do anything. It doesn't affect anything outside. It's only within the marching ants of our selection. Now the problem with this, is that if I need to move this square for any reason, I can, <coughs> excuse me, I can grab our move tool and try to move this pink circle, right? 
But it's moving the whole thing. Nick, why is yeah. it moving the whole thing? Let's help people understand. Well, they're all on the same lay layer and there's nothing to differentiate them from each other as an element. Yep, absolutely. So right now, yeah. everything is on one layer. And I like to think of this as pieces of paper, right? All that you're doing in Photoshop is adding pieces of paper on top of each other. Sure. Uh, if you, back in school, ever used a transparency, it's like a see-through piece of cellophane and you would draw on it. And if you layer them on top of each other, you could kind of build and make more things. That's our thing of Photoshop is each layer is contributing to something. So I'm going to control Z and undo a bunch of stuff. So we have our selection here, great. What we're going to do is we're going to click on this, oh no, hold on. Uh, uh, hold what on. did you do? Wait, I got you guys. Uh, one of the tools is behind my face. All right, wait, oh, here, here we go. <laughs> Again, we are, we are the most live show here. All right, so. There you go. What I want you to do, pay no attention to the Creative Cloud Express uh, that's happening in the background, is right here. See that little plus? So yes. we're gonna click on that plus and watch what happens. It a makes new a layer. new layer right here. Uh, and Nick, what do those little check check checkerboards mean? That's your transparency. So basically, it's telling you right now that is a completely empty layer, and it's transparent. Don't yep, forget. Absolutely. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to grab the paint bucket tool one more time, and we're going to click into our selection now and watch what happens. So it looks exactly the same as it did before. Actually, let's do this. There you go. There we go. We're resourceful here in Office Hours. Nice. Uh, so now, great. We have our own layer. And when I grab the selection tool and try to move it, it is going to move only that layer. And you can see that those little check boxes are happening on the edges. That means that it is transparent, which you can't see right here, right? Looks pretty good. There you go. Uh, and someone is saying that they are getting confused about masking in the chat. Um, we probably won't get to masking today, but it, actually yeah, we will get to masking maybe a little bit today. Try it. But we yeah. will come back in Photoshop 201, which will be happening in, uh, I believe April. We'll be circling back on these. Uh, and yes, great, there are daily creative challenges that happen every single day. And so you can go to behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop if you want some more help uh, to learn some things that are a little bit more complex. Uh, all right, so we've made a shape and we have aligned it here. We are on our way. And the last thing that I wanna show you in the 101 of kind of creating a marketing material is adding type. So. We have been working on this series for uh, Office Hours. We've been working with an imaginary concept of a cafe called the uh, Mythic Rescue Cafe to where we keep animals off the endangered species list and make sure that they don't go mythic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on T, which is our type tool right here, and I'm just going to click anywhere on our canvas and it will make a new type layer for us. So I'll click right here. Automatic. Boom. There it is. Uh, and you'll see it's really, really tiny right now. So you can change the size up here by just clicking and dragging down. So let's do 60. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to type in here, maybe I want to type in uh, our name, which is Mythic it's Rescue Mythic. Cafe. Mythic yes. Rescue, Rescue Cafe. All right, so it looks really bad right now. Uh, and what I'm going to do is hit Control and T or Command and T if you are on uh, a Mac. And you can also get it in our type panel over here. But we are going to hit Control A to select all of this type and change the distance between the lines, which would be right here on the right. So we're just gonna and bring this down. The great thing too is you've got all familiar windows from any other application that you've possibly more comfortable with. Yep they bring over right to the new one. Exactly, so we've laid out our type right here and I'm going to, I could make this a little bit bigger or I could hit Control T or go to Edit and Transform or Free Transform. Mm -hmm. And then we can just click and drag this and it will scale it up, right? We're just clicking and dragging the side of that box. And the great thing about Photoshop is it will keep everything proportionate when you start to uh, drag. So no yes. no scare In about fact, stretching things. it's the opposite things. because it is uh, the opposite uh, of Illustrator. holding shift key down allows you to have the free transform. Yep, absolutely. So mm -hmm. we've created a marketing graphic. We have used background, color, and some type. Very, very basic here in Photoshop. And again, this is stuff that you can do in Creative Cloud Express, but we wanna get into photo editing here in Photoshop. So you can use it for graphics, but you can also use it for a lot of 
awesome photo stuff. And Nick, yeah. do you want to hop over to your screen and sure. share kind of how you use Photoshop for photo editing? Yeah, for sure. So I'm showing here a quick little image of something that I would typically work with. This could be photography from a client. It could be um, something that we are trying to mock up or just to have a quick rendering of for you name it. it could be presentation, you name it. And there's a lot of different tools that I think are so advanced, but yet ridiculously elementary for people like me who really don't know how to do a lot of the most advanced stuff. It makes me feel like I've at least got some kind of Photoshop skills. The first one is object select. And what's neat about this is it's such a quick way to grab one element or something that is here and Photoshop will know exactly how to break that, select it, and then I could do whatever I want. So say I need to do a duplicate, I need two more of these bottles to be added to the actual image here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right over to here to the object select tool here. And you can see it's already kind of figuring things out as you just hover, which is I, like the coolest thing. Yes, right? I love when, when I do this and I turn on that object select tool. And again, you don't have to do anything with the object select tool. Literally just click on that tool and your computer yes. will process for you and then everything you hover will be blue. I love exactly. that as I scroll over, as things highlight, in my brain, Photoshop is making a sound effect that just goes, eh? 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 Yeah. Eh? This? This? <laughs> right? It's like this one? Is this kind of what you want? Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So, so, so what do we do now that we have a uh, process and we see things coming up in blue? So I'm just going to, I, this is what I definitely need. So for now, I'm going to give this a shot because when I just lasso the entire piece with that tool, give it a second. And what it's going to do is it's going to actually grab that exactly. You can hit the Q button and the Q will just put this quick overlay on in case there is just notice, you know, we're, we're like white on white here, right? We, there's not a lot of kind of drastic contrast between the cap and the background of this, these bottles. Yep. So by doing this, I get to see, yeah, I got a pretty good thing there. There might need some touching up in there. But for now, I do like where we're at. Yep. And I think we've we selected. And if this is just a quick rendering that I need to show a client, let's see what happens. So all I'm going to do is with a command C, I've copied that. Don't forget, we're on one layer right now but if i do a command v what it's done notice in my layer section is i have an isolated version of those two bottles right on top of the other ones and how i know it's there is i'm just going to grab the move tool and bring this over and i notice now i have this and i have a duplicate yes so if i have this here by hitting command t you get bounding box. And now I can basically transform this into any way. So because I'm thinking this is more maybe in the forefront, I'm just going to make them a little bit bigger and kind of find the right positioning form. Okay. Yep. And we're just and using for, the move tool to move it around there by hitting correct. V. Uh, if yeah. you don't want the hotkey of control T to transform something to get those little nodes on the sides, you can go to edit and then click on free transform as well. Perfect. So then let's say right now I can obviously go in, we could do some retouching. That would be like a 201 here. I can definitely add a drop shadow to make it really feel like it's part of the environment. But one of the other notes was maybe, can we do something cool and actually add maybe a drop shadow to the trees and the branch? We already Ooh. saw when we were in the quick select tool here, the object select, when I hovered over here, go back to this layer. Is it gonna pick I'm up getting... the tree branches? Oh my gosh. Look at that, isn't that crazy? That's so let's just good. click on it. That looks great. So I'm going to go here and you can see I've got the marching ants. They're all there ready to go. So what I'm going to do is the same way I did that with the second layer that it made from copying the bottles. Yep. I'm going to hit command C again. So and then come real quick. Copying let, it. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about the real quick. Sorry, the marching ants here. So th that's exactly the same concept as when we made that oval to make the marketing graphic that it's basically yes. making a cutout or a window and saying, hey, Everything is blocked off, but the window is just these branches. So if yeah. you're going to copy and paste something, it's just the branch. It's everything within the window is active. Uh, so notice, that's what's happening with the yeah, branches. Notice the negative spaces. It caught. So yep. think of it as a piece of paper that has had these areas cut out. It's almost making the mask for you in a way. Why finding those edges. And it's not doing it just by chance. I believe the quick select tool or the object select tool is using um, Adobe Sensei, right? Because it's like, that's a twig, that is a branch. Like Anytime I don't, yeah, anytime I don't know something, I say yeah. that it's Adobe Sensei. It is, of yeah. course. So here's what I'm gonna do. I hit Command C, that's copying it. Now I have that in the clipboard. And Command V, 
has placed a new one right here. Yep. Now and you can I see do that want we, it. We have those little yeah. check the little checkerboard behind it, which means mm -hmm. that it's transparent so that we can move it around. And yes, Elizabeth, uh, someone in chat is asking, is this the 2022 version of Photoshop? Yes. So I'll yes. show you in just a second how to update if you don't have some of these tools. Uh, Nick, go right. ahead, keep going. Yeah. So real quick. All I got to do now is add a drop shadow to the new layer. And if I want, I'm just going to do branch two. I love to make sure we're layering and making sure we're giving these this. I'm going to go back and say uh, bottles two, right? We're going to go back to the branch, which I spelled wrong. <laughs> Hello, YouTube. <laughs> uh, Nick, can you pull your uh, layers panel up to the top on the right there? Oh, yes. Perfect. Perfect. Thank there you. We there we are. There we go. So there we go. Bottles two, branch one, and we have our background. So with branch here, very simply, layer style gives you all these quick things to actually do. What I love to do here is I think I, I, I love these areas where you can explore and really figure out what the, the program can do. A lot of times the exploration of these things to me is a little bit more intuitive than actually trying to see a lot of tutorials form, you know? Um, here is where I can like turn the angle. So I'm thinking, uh, can you pull that light center? Sorry. There we go. Let me get that here. Got there it. Thank we are. you. So let's find the right light source. We can move it around. We can actually change the opacity of that, but for sure. I want to change maybe the spread and the size a little bit or soften it. So you notice uh, this is really neat. You can start figuring out which one is actually softening it. The spread will kind of like let it be a little bit more of a blur. And maybe that might be too much of that. But here I'm multiplying. So all that's doing is it's putting a transparent black layer over that slightly pink background. And I think what's neat about that is it adds to the whole idea of the, the color tone and everything. So yeah. I'm going to bring it down to about there and perfect. So now I've got this like really cool idea here Little that separation. looks kind of like, okay, if that's what the client wanted, <clears throat> we can give this a shot and see if that's what they wanted and how did we do. Yep. before doing anything even remotely more fine-tuned. Yep, and the cool thing about Photoshop is whatever you're working on, think of it as augmenting, right? Uh, because it's pixels, you're not really changing anything. It is augmenting things. And so you can see on Nick's screen here uh, that underneath that layer, it has the little uh, where it says effects and then drop shadow. That's yes. basically saying, hey, we have added something to this layer that is an effect that has uh, kind of been an extra thing on top of that layer. And I think um, that's a great way, you know, think of this as like the, the tree that keeps, you can see how it's stacking. And if I double click on that, I get those components again for the drop shadow. So if I do need to tweak it, it is consider it a sub layer. And it's so nice to have that control that I can go back. Do I need to bevel it? Do I need to do any of these other layer styles? It's all available for you to do. Yep. And can you uh, click that one more time and bring it up? So yeah. there is a very important checkbox that you need right on the right there. It says preview. Make sure the preview is yes. turned on and that will allow you to see what you were doing. Um, and yes. if you are getting into Photoshop, at this point, we would give you enough to kind of mask out an object, to copy something, select something. Once you have done that, my advice to you is literally go through every single one of those settings, right? Turn on yes. a drop shadow, turn on an outer glow, do a stroke, and just understand what they do. Um, so we do have a couple things that I want to show you real quick, and then we have a request from someone in chat. We love to Great. take live requests here, and I am going to show you how to do blurs. Uh, so. What I want to talk about real quick over on my screen is this is the Creative Cloud desktop app. If you don't have it, download it. And you can see here the updates that you might need. So it will show either it's up to date or it needs an update in here. I need to update my InDesign. Um, and you can turn on auto updates or you can leave it so that you do it manually. So I have two updates to do, which will happen eventually. Um, I'll probably do them today. But yes, this is the way to update if you don't have the newest version of Photoshop. So. We're back in Photoshop. This is one of my favorite animals. And I thought because we are working with uh, the mythic rescue cafe, I wanted to work with an animal that felt a little bit mythic. Uh, and to me, I believe that these are called blue fitted, blue footed booby bird. I think that that's what they're called, which is the greatest name of all time. Um, and like, it's so fun. So what we're going to do is we are going to mask this out just like Nick did, right? We're going to make a selection and I'm going to show you how to blur it so that we have a nice little uh, blur to it and put one in the foreground as well, like Nick did. So Great. what I'm gonna do is with our background right here, 
I'm just going to grab the quick selection. Actually, we're gonna do it a different way. Let's do this. Let's go to select and then click on subject. And what it's gonna do is it's going to find and use the magic Adobe Sensei technology that's floating in a million tiny pieces. And you can see here <laughs> that it has found pretty much the the bird that we want. And yes, this is a Pokemon. I 100% agree, someone says. So we're gonna use- Completely that, yeah. Yep, we're gonna use the zoom tool right here. Um, and we are going to zoom in. Now, Ooh. real quick, Nick. I have made yes. a mistake. We have both made a mistake that is the most important thing to do when you open a photo in Photoshop. So I'm going to pretend like I just opened this photo. And the Great. number one thing that you need to do is come over here and you can see that it has the background with the lock. Now yeah. in Photoshop, we want to work non-destructively as much as we can. And Nick, what does non-destructive mean? Do you know about non-destructive? <laughs> as, oh, as, 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 as non I have no idea where you, <laughs> yes, is that okay, a I love this. term? I love this. So it, yes, it is a term yeah. and non-destructive means that we're trying not to change the actual pixels of something as much as possible, ah, right? Gotcha, so if yes. I grab a brush and I uh, just brush on this image, you can see that now it has changed the actual image, right? If I try yeah. to erase that, it's going to erase to the background and not look great. So what we want to do is we want to make a duplicate or work on top of something. So the first thing that I always do when I have an image is I right click and then I go to duplicate layer. Perfect. So that is going to allow us to have a, another Safety version net. of this so that if I make a pro, if I make, if I make a problem, if I make a mistake, <laughs> then I can go back and fix it. But mm -hmm. each time we add something, again, we're just adding those layers. We never want to be drawing on an actual layer that is a photo. We always want to be adding on top so that we're not destroying the pixels, right? We want yes. to augment the pixels, not destroy them. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut out this little guy by just doing the same thing that we did. I'm gonna to go to select, actually, uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's go to select and then subject and it will find that subject for us. It's gonna be a little bit rough because this image has a lot of similarities. Yeah. But if there are things missing that you want to add, you can use something called the magic wand tool. So you can use the magic wand tool right here and you can turn up the tolerance and the tolerance is basically, it's going to find clusters of colors. Yeah. Uh, and so we can turn up the tolerance here. I like to set it at 32. And then we're just going to hold shift and you can see that little plus shows up on our magic wand. That means- You wanna add that to the mask of what's outside of it. Yes, yes, exactly. So right now you can see that it turns to that white. If I'm in here, that means that that is our current selection inside the marching ants. But there's a hole right here and it just goes to the magic wand, which means it's not. So I wanna hold shift and that is going to add it in. So when we click there, our tolerance is a little bit too high and it pulled this background as well. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is bring this tolerance down to about 10 and see if we can grab, there we go, just these little pieces. Now, nice. you can hold shift and just click, 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 but it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. What we can do is use the uh, quick selection tool. Uh, it's a little bit of a different selection and we can hold shift again. And instead of clicking, we're just gonna click and drag some of these areas that may be missing. Uh, now our size is a little bit small, so you can change the size right here. We're gonna bring that up to probably 14, oh, that's good. And we're gonna hold shift and just go over these and you can see that it's picking up these edges of the foot and when we release, it will refine it for us. So we don't really have to do any work to find the edges here. We're just clicking and dragging over and then it will find those edges for us. So a little missing piece over here as well and you can see Perfect. that it just grabbed that piece for us. There we so go. I'm gonna zoom out, make sure it's got little pieces looking good. And I also wanna grab, uh, you know what, I don't. I don't wanna do anything with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to make a copy of it and we're gonna do that by hitting uh, either Command J or going over here and clicking on, oopsies, uh, right clicking and then going to dupl uh, layer via copy. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna make a new layer as a copy. We could control and right. uh, copy and paste this as well, but if you click on layer via copy, then it will make a copy of it. If you do cut, it actually has cut it out of this background. So you can see it's cut it out yeah. of that background, <laughs> which we don't want. So we're gonna layer via copy here. Just right click and then layer via copy. And now we have an independent little bird. Look at him, look at his little friend. 
It um, already looks like it already looks like a little oh miniature. Gosh. I'm so like, happy. Okay, so I want to do uh, one in the foreground. So we're again just going to go to edit and transform, and we're going to scale this one up pretty big, and bring him down here. And you can see that it started to get really pixely because yeah. in Photoshop, if you try to blow something up really large, there's only a certain amount of squares, right? If you zoom yeah. in on those squares, you'll start to see bigger squares. That's how it works. So the resolution on this is really high, which we'll talk about in uh, 201. But I want to put him in the foreground because I just think it's really funny. Um, and so what we're going to do is we are going to go to filter. And then we're going to go to blur. And we're going to do Gaussian blur and Gaussian blur basically just think of it as your eyes going out of focus, right? It's going to make mm -hmm. everything softer. There's a bunch of blurs, but Gaussian is probably the one that we use the most. So we're going to click on Gaussian blur. And then as we drag this up, you can see the preview making him more and more blurry. So this is great for figuring out how to do uh, depth of field, right? Things that are close are often blurry and then things that are far away are uh, more crisp uh, if you're focused on a photo, right? So we're focused on the background and he's gonna be a little bit blurry. Um, and so yes, someone is saying blur the background and that's exactly what I actually wanna do. So we're yeah. gonna select the background here, go to filter, blur, do Gaussian blur, Gaussian blur. and then pull this up and it's gonna blur that background out and we just find the right there you go. blur so that it looks like he's popping in. <laughs> Look at it. Uh, That's great. So again, this looks like a photo that you would have taken, right? I would not yeah. think twice about this being a photo that was actually taken. Um, yeah, and I like with to less say, detail in the background, you can't really tell that it's a total duplicate. Yep, I like to say that Illustrator is for creating reality and Photoshop is for augmenting reality. Yeah. So we yeah. have augmented reality to kind of create a new uh, zone. So we're gonna, Nick, let's hop back over to your screen real quick yeah. and then I'm gonna show a couple more things uh, once we come back. Uh, all right, yeah, what's going on here? What, what is this? So, what is this? Uh, this effect this called? Crazy lens flare. So the client sends this going. You know, we love the cosmetics on that background and everything, but they want to add this. Like, I love it when a client says, "We saw this really cool thing. Can you do something like that?" So this was the image that like you might get from them as far as like lens flare, blurred kind of thing. So all I'm doing here is I'm looking at this. I'm going, okay, let's see what happens. I'm going to copy it. It's a completely other JPEG you can see here on the top. But when I go back to my branch one, again, it's in the clipboard. So all I could do here is I can basically paste it. I'm gonna bring it in and I'm gonna move this layer. I don't think we've moved layers yet, have we? No, nope. you can click and drag those layers. And again, there everything that Nick's about to do is just the idea of those transparencies, right? We're stacking things on top of each other. And sometimes yeah. the things on top will affect the things on bottom. Um, and so to grab this image, we just clicked and dragged it, or you can select it all and go to Control C, copy, and then paste on go. the new artboard. So top is obviously above everything, and you got your background as the base there. So what I can start doing with here is like now I can apply opacity and a few little effects to this late layer to see what how this starts to look. So all of a sudden I'm getting this idea here that's really really cool. Then I'm noticing too maybe I should bring the the new bottles above it and see how that looks a little bit because that is kind of there we go Ooh. and now got something kind of cool going here yep. but watch this this is one of my favorite uh, things where yeah real quick question. let's talk about opacity and what opacity is doing what what yeah. is opacity and where did we get that to change it so here right up there we got our opacity level i always like to click here because you get the slider you can obviously enter here but what this is doing is turning that image into a screen. So notice right now at 100%, you see exactly what I brought over. But as I slow this down, imagine it's like becoming on tracing paper. Yep. And it's more and more, more and more of a tracing paper, right? So I'm getting just the hints of it, which is really nice. And then this guy here, he's kind of in front of it. But again, we can kind of mess around with it. We can go into, I, you can hit Command L for levels. This might just be something quick to do. I can darken it a little bit just to get it a little bit more in that vibe. So by sliding things over, it's feeling a little more like it's in the scene. But what's neat is I've added this neat little touch with this layer. And again, too, your opacity or your, um, your, your, your mode here, right now it's just that normal. But as you slide through here, you're gonna see 
all look at like all these different cool little surprises by darker color. You can go to screen, you can go to color dodge, then you can go to some of these. And what's neat is I'm not even clicking, I'm just hovering over and I'm like, ooh, I like the linear light. That looks really nice. Let's see how that looks. Click it there. It's looking great. So all of a sudden I've added some cool effect to maybe something that what the client wanted to see. And I've got a quick visual to say, is this looking great? What I love to do too is like print out my options, right? And show yep. multiple. Oh yeah, so, absolutely. Again, quick way to show and, and actually bring this in. And it was like three clicks and I'm, I'm, I'm looking really good. Yep, and if, uh, if you want to, again, come back for 201 because we'll be getting into blending modes like hardcore. I'll explain the math behind blending modes, which is so mm -hmm. fun. So each of those <laughs> blending modes is like a mathematical equation for how the pixels integrate with each other, uh, yeah. which is really fun. The easiest one is multiply. It literally is taking the values, multiplying them together, doing an algorithm, and then giving yeah. a new color. So we'll talk about that in 201, get way into it, but we want you to get in Photoshop and just play around with 101 right now. So do that, overlay, overlay something, turn on the opacity, play around with yeah. each of those blending modes and see what you can come up with. There's no wrong answer. I just did it for something earlier today where we wanted the whole comic book effect. And again, we found this beautiful, like torn, rough and half tone, brought it over. And again, it just created this beautiful little texture on everything. It's really a fast trick. Yep. So uh, I wanna do one more thing here, and this is a great way that if you are messing around with putting things together, doing new things, uh, adding things to a scene, sometimes they can look a little bit different, right? So uh, yeah. I have another image, that's my face. Uh, I have another little guy right here, right? And let's see if we can quick, quick select this real quick. If not, I'm gonna Ooh, try a different- uh, This could be a good one. A different method. Oh, Andrew, what happened there? We clicked the wrong thing. All right, there we go, cool. It'll wow. select him pretty well. So I'm gonna select him and I'm just going to control C to copy or go to edit and copy. It's gonna copy this little guy here. And we're gonna paste him in here. So I'm gonna go to edit and paste. Sure, not great, but close <laughs> enough. Uh, I'm gonna put him go. yeah. up here right. Ooh, and then perfect. we're going to add that same blur. And the great thing is if you're working with a blur, if you come to filter, it's actually gonna keep that blur with the same settings. So yes, I'm gonna click on Gaussian Blur there. and it's gonna do that same setting so that it looks like this guy is now in the background. So I love it. Something that feels a little bit off is the colors are a little bit off here, right? Uh, it just looks a little bit weird. And so what I wanna do is I'm going to brighten this and I'm going to start augmenting things on top. And as we do that, it's actually gonna make it look like everything's more cohesive because everything's being affected in the same way. So we're gonna use something called adjustment layers that are right here. And these mm -hmm. are basically just things that will augment the photo. So the first thing that I wanna do is I am going to turn on the brightness and contrast right here. So I click on that and I just clicked right here on this little circle with a slash through it. And you can see that it has this brightness and contrast. I'm gonna double click here. Oh, and whoa, double click, hold on. It is pulling up a window. Where's the window is the question. Oh, down here, okay. There so it has pulled up a window for us right here. And as I drag this, you can see that it's starting to augment the brightness, right? Everything got a little bit brighter. Uh, and that's looking great. You can see if I turn it off by clicking the little uh, eye, it's going to go back. If I turn it on, yep. it's augmenting everything below it. So that's, that's how the augmentations work, is it just augments things above and below. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come in here and we're going to go to hue and saturation and then we're gonna start playing around with the different hues and saturations. Uh, we can click right here on master and go down maybe to yellows, right? It feels like this guy is too yellow. And yeah. so if I pull the saturation down with yellows, it is going to take just those yellows down. And look at that. You can see that it's starting to become a little bit more of the scene mm -hmm. and start to match what's happening back here a little bit. So that's it's almost like good. you need, to, you gotta look at it first to see what is, what needs to be added or removed, right? Yep, absolutely. And it's clear when you look at that, that there's much more yellow in his image than the rest. Yep, and so then one more thing that we can do is we can add one more of that adjustment layer and we're gonna come down here and we are going to go to Vibrance. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit and it's gonna give us some nice colors and maybe the saturation comes up a little bit as well. 
And you can see that as the saturation comes up, it's making those feet brighter, but also making him brighter. And so we wanna yeah. make sure that those stay the same, but you can play around with these right here, these adjustment layers, and they just stack on top of each other. And if I turn them off, we still have our same image. We can turn off that guy, we can turn off this guy, and we yeah. have destroyed the background here, but we made a copy at the beginning, so if we need to, we can go back to the beginning as Always well. Always there. Right, so that's and not I love that those, I love that those adjustment layers are basically filters that in most cases you'd have, but to have them automatically become their own little layer is such a great tool to go back and you can mess with it. You can you could turn one off if it didn't work, yep, you know? Absolutely, and so Nick, uh, you have a portrait up, which is another thing yeah. Photoshop is often used for, again, we're augmenting reality. Sometimes totally. you take a photo and it's not, it's not up to snuff or there's something that we wanna change that we wanna augment yeah. the reality of it. And you can do that yes. very easily in Photoshop. So what are we gonna do and, here? Yeah, so we've got a few things here. Maybe we wanna clean up they were maybe a little bit like we've got the blemishes showed up a little bit or there's something else. It could be even something in the material of clothing. Um, a lot of times clients want these quick little edits. And what's great is there's a few tools here that you can really mess with. So we're going to smooth out some of that. And then the other thing we're going to try to do is get rid of a lot of these frizz parts here in the hair that are just kind of like not necessary. And I think will help clean up the, the image completely. Yep. So I'm just going to zoom in here and you can start to see where we have that. I'm gonna to go to here, this is called the Spot Healing Brush. And what's neat about this, you can actually go in here and you can manipulate your brush size, you can manipulate the hardness of it. So you'll see when I bring it over, I've got this, this is about all I need for this. So I'm just going to kind of like move these over and what it's gonna do is basically kind of just, what's neat too is I'm, I'm a fan of like not letting, not going completely overboard and making these like, you know, com perfect complexion, but getting into a lot of these little areas and just finishing them a little bit here and there, it really does help. And you can start to see, you still get a very natural kind of vibe here. You haven't like airbrushed the heck out of someone's face and made them look a little bit, you know, fake, right? Yep. So here we are, we're just kind of moving around. Now, if I zoom in, zoom out a little bit, you could tell we've done a little bit of extra work there and it looks good. So I'm gonna move here, get this one a little bit more. There we go. And we'll zoom out. And again, I think we've fixed a really nice problem, but it still feels authentic, right? I think sometimes it gets to be a little bit on the too fake side, right? Yep. So that's the spot healing tool. It's really great to use. The next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna go over to the clone stamp tool. And what this is, look at this great little kind of like demo when you hover over particularly if you've never used these before let the little demo show you exactly what it's doing and you see what it's doing you put a target down and then you brush far away from it or as far or as whatever distance you want and what it's going to do is it's going to pick up where your source was and it's like taking like if i want to take that blue sky and get rid of some of that hair there all i'm going to do is zoom right in so you can start to see now Another thing, just like illustrators, when you hold the shift key, to, I'm sorry, the uh, space bar down, you can move around with the hand automatically, right? So let's go back to here. We're gonna go back to the clone stamp tool. So hover out in the area of what you want. So in this case, it's the blue sky. And basically you're gonna option and click there. And now as I move here, notice what it's doing. I have that crossbar there. It's telling me where I'm grabbing the source from. But as I kind of like just softly brush here, I can get rid of a lot of that stuff. And because I'm not using too hard of a brush, it's making a nice dissolve and a really great kind of like airbrush effect. So when you move a little bit, notice the background's changing. It's not just one tonal blue. So I'm gonna resample here. I can hit the option key and click and we'll do it again up here. And sampling so is just saying, this is where we wanna be taking from and take this yes. and put it over here, right? Photoshop yeah. is taking literally those pixels and painting the pixels that you say, hey, take these pixels and put them here. It's just painting over those pixels. Yeah, and again, we're not, we're not going in there and going like, let's cut all of that frizz out. All we're doing is kind of just going, let's make it a little less busy and what it can obviously do is as you kind of look back, you can see it's still very natural and we have like just a more clarity. Maybe there's a little bit more focus on them. You know, considering if this is going to print or something, you know, you want to make sure you are looking at every aspect of the photo and giving it your best shot with a good quality. And I can, you can see it's already made quite a difference. 
The other thing I don't think we mentioned too is one of my favorite things about this is the history tool. Um, because again, it's holding everything I've done here. And if I go back all the way, it goes here to where it's open. So I'll do a quick, just let's go back to the original and you'll see what a difference it makes here. And then I can go back to the very end and you can see how all of your progress has improved the picture. Yep. Uh, so that's what we wanted to show you in Photoshop. I know that we got maybe a little bit advanced today, a little 201, but we got you some basics and we want you to play around with those. Now, if you finished this lesson, if you're watching the replay, one, thanks for watching. Thanks so much. Leave a comment down below about what you want us yes, to cover uh, and hit that subscribe. But if you are intimidated and you're like, I don't know how to jump in here, great. Bookmark mm. this, add it to a playlist and come back because I'm going to show you an easy way to do some of the stuff that we have been doing today in Photoshop uh, in a new program called Adobe Creative Cloud Express. What a great segue. It just felt yes. right. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do a lot of the stuff that we just did in Creative Cloud Express. Uh, you can go to express.adobe.com, I believe it is. And in here, we have an image right, that we've created. This is some product photography that I did for a client. And we're just going to click on this image, right? Uh, and I've just gone to photos and then I uploaded a photo. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, we could do it with our stock photo if we want to cut out our little penguin. But uh, I'm going to use the, you know what? <laughs> Let's let's use that. Okay. Want to try it? Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna put our little penguin in here, and we just click uh, anything that you've gotten from Adobe Stock will come in, and we're gonna click. And again, you can use those side arrows to make things bigger, make things smaller. And the great thing about CCX uh, is Creative Cloud Express is we have all of these enhancements that we used on Photoshop. Right? It's all here. So we can click on enhancements. Just click on this little uh, button right here. And you can see that we have everything that we changed. We have the contrast. We changed the brightness to make it a little bit brighter. We changed mm -hmm. the saturation to make those legs really go through. Uh, we can play around with all of these different sliders and not have to worry about kind of all of the details of Photoshop. We can do it really easily here. Uh, now, in Photoshop, we cropped it out and did all kinds of complicated selections and all that stuff. Uh, no more. No more. We don't need that. What we can do is we just select this image and then click on remove background. And I'm actually curious in what it's going to do. I think it's going to get pretty close. So we're going to click on remove background. Watch Let's what see. happens. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. And so it is. Oh, we lost Nick. Uh Oh, Oh, there he's back. All right. There we go. Uh, yeah. So, so it has done such a good job at creating this cutout. And now we have just our little guy and we can drag him so that he's coming in here and maybe looking for some good coffee. So Creative Cloud Express, super, super easy to do some of that stuff that's a little bit more complicated in Photoshop. Uh, yeah. You can probably do Photoshop uh, much more detailed and get really into the nitty gritty. Um, mm -hmm. But Creative Cloud Express, awesome program to kind of just get through uh, some very quick edits and do some of the yeah. concepts we talked about. And if you want to learn more about that, we are going to be doing a special on April 1st about that. But right now, you can go right here. Uh, you can go to youtube.com slash Adobe Creative Cloud Express. They have tutorials about all of the things. So you can go do that, subscribe to that channel. It's actually a separate channel. So you can subscribe there. You can get some really awesome tutorials to help further your Photoshop or maybe help you understand the concepts before you go into Photoshop so you don't feel overwhelmed. Uh, we want to help you there. I got to say, it's like one of the best tools, even I think you see a lot of stuff that has presets and pre-made things and you as a designer might be reluctant to use it, but everything I've used on the Creative Cloud Express is like so well done and so well designed. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of it. It's really great. Yes, it's really amazing. Um, so one more thing that we haven't talked about at all during this episode, and I want to save it for the end for those people that are watching on replay. If you're still here and you're watching this on the replay, thanks for, thanks for hanging out. Um, so for those of you that are here live, we've got something very special for you, and that is our Discord. It's an awesome community yes. that we've been working on a project together. So Nick, where's that link? Where do we? Where it's do we right there below us. Do you see it there? Boom, 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 boom. 
Yes. Right there. So right there in our Discord. <laughs> and uh, we've been doing some fun stuff. So our Discord always has a voice chat that's happening. Uh, and you can see over here, the voice chat is always happening over in the corner. You can pop in, talk to friends, uh, kind of hang out during the Office Hours show. But then we also have channels to talk about what's happening on the show, what we're working on, and we have a homework channel. Uh, Nick, what have we been working on with our homework? Um, what's it's the concept? So great. Yes. What's been going on? <clears throat> so we started this back with our ideation, and we came up with the Mythic Rescue Cafe. And what we've been doing is just asking you guys to, like, we went into sketching. We went into vector. Everybody started pl placing some stuff in here from some logo designs. This is really so neat. I love seeing a collaborative group from all over the world working on one brief, right? Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so great. Yeah, so there's some incredible work. Um, if you're just catching up, we are creating this together, and this is what's happening in the homework channel. If you want to join in, pop in there. Ask somebody what's going on, how you can get involved, uh, because they'll help you. Uh, we're basically, we had been working on logos, and now that we're in Photoshop, we're going to be flip-flopping with this concept of the Mythic Rescue Cafe. So we yes. taught you Illustrator, and then we made a logo using Illustrator. This week, we taught you Photoshop, and next week we're going to be editing a photo and maybe making a like postcard in Photoshop. Mm, um, so great idea. get your ideas together, grab a photo of a mythic animal and maybe we will edit it together, put some type on there and play around with making a card for our cafe. So that's something that we're working on all together. Every single week we'll have homework for you. Um, so this week homework, find an image, find a cool image of a creature that looks mythic or something that's on the endangered species list. And next week we'll be, showed a great example of one today so like you should be giving everybody a good right right like i, I literally was like what's that like little guy yeah what are things that like don't feel real and i'm like oh the blue fitted yeah okay so what we can do um is all together is we can go to a very special website that is stock.adobe.com so stock.adobe.com is thinking about loading right now we lost Nick. I think that I'm having connection issue. There we go. There we back. go. Nick's back. I, I think mm -hmm. I'm having an issue uh, with connection because stock isn't loading for me either. But Oh, okay, oh there gotcha. we go. We did it. We did it. There okay. we go. I was going to say. Uh, we can go to stock.adobe.com. Uh, and here's, here's a little insider. little insider trick for you. At the end of this, at the end of this, <laughs> slash free. So there is a great collection of Adobe stock stuff that is free. Um, and so if you can, you can click up here on the top. It's not that big of a secret, but if you just do stock.adobe.com slash free, uh, you can come in here and maybe we can do endangered animal and hit there enter. Check this out. Boom. Look at all these cool animals and these are all free. You can license them and download them and then work with them for your card next week. If you want to cut something out, if you want to practice, this would be a great one to use the object selection tool, get oh, that wow. tortoise yeah. out. Um, very, very easy to play around. If you need images and you don't know where to start, use one of these. Um, it's so, so easy. And this is uh, also integrated with uh, Creative Cloud Express as well, if you want to yes. work there. And they'll show up there just as easy as it will in libraries. Yes, it's so easy. It's so That's easy. Uh, all right, so Nick, we've got about, uh, I don't know, like a minute and a half left. For those that have made it this far, let's talk about yeah. what we're doing this year and how people yeah. can continue to be involved. What is this show? What's coming in the future weeks? Uh, what's kind of the vision for Office Hours Creative Basics? Yeah, so we're gonna finish up our Creative Basics 101 as we move through here, then we're going to take a little bit of a turn and we're going to get into, I believe we're doing five weeks of logo design. Five right after weeks that. of logo design. Oh, yes. I was like, this is going to be the best. Yes. So, and um, I believe that's starting that's early like March. So stay tuned for that. We will be talking more about it on the show, but we are doing five weeks of logo design. Yeah. And then again, we'll get into creative basics 201 and kind of further the conversation and kind of take off where we left with each step that we've been doing here throughout this process. But I can't wait for the uh, the logo one. That's gonna be, to have that kind of in-depth time to talk about something that's that important is gonna be fantastic. Yep, and yeah. That's, and, where, that's where I live. And the live chat right now is talking about the awesome community that we've built. Yes, we have. Um, and 
it is always continuing and that's where you can get updates for what's coming down the pipeline and also like where you can get involved. Again, that discord right there, discord.gg slash ACC. Uh, and Chris is saying five more episodes. Yes, we are doing a one-off series, five episodes on logos. We'll be covering yeah. logo basics, logo types, logo marks, uh, logo systems and branding, and I believe. So brand, each week, and, uh, and like style guiding. Yeah. Yep, yeah. So each week will be a little bit different aspect of logos, but we're going to take you through literally all of the things, uh, and then continue on. And Nick, what's our slogan for this year? Oh, wow. You've said it so many times. <laughs> I, I forget all the time too. Wait, t- take a guess. Um, I, I definitely want to hear like your guess. From it was like from zero to hero in less than a year. But that's it was, what we're doing. You, nope, it zero, was better. Zero to hero. Yeah, <laughs> zero. yeah. So stay tuned. We'll be live every single week, and we'll be taking you from zero to hero <laughs> by the end of the year here on Office Hour. So thanks for joining that's us, everybody. Goal. We will see you next week for another episode where we'll be working in Photoshop uh, to edit a flyer for the Creative Cafe. For Get the ready, Mythic Cafe. That's what it is. Man, I almost <laughs> landed it well. All right, well, <laughs> that's the end of the show. Bye. <laughs> Have a great weekend.